Oh, it is a very dark and stormy day. Or night, whenever this is happening. But it looks like McFly's adventures, after the end of Oracle of Seasons, have taken a turn for the worse. But how bad could it be? Where's Dimitri when you need him? Really, though. What a very tiny lady. Very nice beach, though. I like the music. I think he's dead. <laughs> McFly has his own problems. He's faking his death. Please, not another adventure. Welcome to the island of Yoshi, I guess. And welcome to Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, the DX version. This is the first handheld Legend of Zelda. It came out long before the Oracle games. I guess Link leaving on the ship at the end of the Oracles is sort of like a loose callback to this, since this is how it begins. If anything, it happens around the point of A Link to the Past and the Oracles. It doesn't really matter. The point is, this is a new adventure. The DX version is the Game Boy Color version, which has some new changes, and uh, it's much less broken if you saw Mecha's Let's Play. Uh, I would argue this one's the most broken. It's less easy to break. Right. Hey, Mario is here. And not Zelda. It's uh, one of those Legend of Zelda games where Zelda is remarkably absent. We have to discover the secret of this island, though. And that's what we're all here for. If you remember Malin and Talon from Ocarina of Time and on their references to these characters. Drunk! <laughs> oh, that's not the name we picked! What happened? They just assumed because he washed up on the beach he had a good time. So for this Let's Play, McFly is not McFly, he's drunk. Perfect. And thanks to my patron, simply named the letter D for suggesting the name. Great job. Thank you. Let me know if you've changed your name on Patreon to something else. Hey, we got a shield already. We got our shield, and someone even rode trunk on it. I think someone's after us. Yeah, apparently it's our fault all the monsters are here. At least that's what these guys are leading us to believe. Did they drag him all the way up that hill? That mountain? She seemed to imply the beach is pretty far away. Oh boy, you've you've already met the game's biggest enemy. Yeah. The text box. This is one thing that has not aged very well. The text does not move very quickly and you cannot skip through it. And if you just rub up against something that's too heavy, you get that whole text box. Yeah, every time. And it's not the only long text box. Hey, you remember these guys? They reused pretty much all of the sprites for the Oracle games. These kids are pretty helpful, though. And also, you might have seen earlier, there was a chain chomp. Just tied to a post. The best character in the game. There's a handful of Mario references in this. So this is the fourth Zelda game released. It doesn't really fit in the chronology anywhere and you'll see why as we go through the game. But it is the very first handheld game, as uh, Thornberry mentioned earlier. Yep. A little bit unrefined, but it has a special place in my heart. It's the first Zelda game I ever played, and also the first handheld game I ever played on that big-ass brick Game Boy, so... I love this game to death. I've played it a thousand times. Forward, backwards. You've seen the glitch run. You've seen straight runs. I've, I love this game. It's great. Forward, backwards, figure eight. Right, so my nostalgia is probably going to get the better of me, and even though this game does have flaws all over it, I'm probably going to apologize for it. And I'm not going to apologize for this, though. Speaking of text boxes... Remember the owl from Ocarina of Time? Well, here's where he showed up first. And he shows up constantly, pretty much every time we reach a milestone. 
Yeah, at least in Ocarina of Time, he had the good sense to just give you a monologue once or twice. The owl is going to be your guide through the game. The sword is made of glass or something. It's see-through. Now, I did have Link's Awakening way back in the day. But I didn't get very far. Like, I think I've gotten maybe to the second dungeon. Now, I wanted that guy right in the right place, because as soon as I pick up the sword, Drunk here is going to have a nice little flourish. Drunk is such a show-off. We're going to assume the sword actually says McFly, because I didn't get to it. And he's out. <laughs> Poor sea urchin never saw it coming. Sword is quite strong, aside from those, I guess they're pea hats. Like the Octoroks die quickly, one hit. Mm -hmm. Well, that's this version. There's some tougher enemies as you get later in the game, which is cool, but there are ways to mitigate that. Many ways. Right. So this game is not hard. It's actually probably one of the easier Zelda games. It's a good one if you really want to... Oh, these things. <laughs> Go ahead, finish your thought. <laughs> it's a good game if you want to kind of introduce yourself to handheld or 2D Zelda to kind of... It's just it's because it's easy and it's not very long and it's not drawn out. It's not like playing, you know, Link to the Past where there's a lot of stuff to do. I will say, since this is my first time going all the way through it, I got lost plenty of times. But they do actually have a hinge system, which helps. Perfect. So if you didn't read that text box, that Guardian Acorn is just one of the random pickups you can get, and it halves the damage you receive for as long as that music is playing, which is, I think, until you enter a new zone. That or you take too many hits. Right. Um, and we've got a piece of art. Nice, easy one to pick up. Already. There's also another pickup, a piece of power, which lasts about the same length, but you wreck everything. Like, you do double damage and you send enemies flying across the screen. Obviously the better pickup. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one's cute. He's trying to escape. You can't actually talk to that one, but it wouldn't let me. So there's a very fun thing you can do with Bow Wow's house. This game is not immune to glitches. No. Even in the color version. In the original Game Boy version, for those who haven't seen Mecha Prime's LP, which you absolutely should, it's one of my very favorites. In the original Game Boy version, once you got to the edge of the screen and you press select to pull up the map, you would actually warp to the other side of the next screen and you could very easily break the entire game. Yeah, it's remarkably, you know, useful yeah. <laughs> trick. Like, you would both make shortcuts and also just bug the shit out of the game. Absolutely. Depending on where you were. I want to thank you for putting the sword on the B button. Yep. <laughs> it's a compulsion. Do not take it off, ever. I'm really not. <laughs> I've noticed, um... Reading, I mean, I know meta commentary is not great in videos, but reading some of the comments that people are getting mad about it, which is great. <laughs> yeah, we are recording this while Ages is nearly fully public and Seasons is on the way. We're fully done with both of those. It's just a matter of them going public now. This guy's really excited for you to buy something. Hey, come on. Don't be mean. He's trying to make money. He's miming, wringing my neck. A local mom and pop store. We'll have some fun with him. Yeah. Marin went out to get high. <laughs> now I really like the song that she sings. It's like the main light motif of the game. That song is very important to the game. It's also very melodic. It's only using one channel, but it's really cool. Yeah. It's one of the things I talked about in, I think, the first part of Oracle of Ages. One thing I really like about the music for the portable games is that the melodies really come through, even though they're, like, 8-bit sound systems. Aw, oh, come on. It's only been, what, like, four <laughs> minutes since we've seen you?
The mysterious wood, you'll find mystery in it. And wood. Hey, hey. Alright, so we're starting to get a little bit of an idea of what we're supposed to be doing here. There's something called a windfish, and I guess we gotta wake it up, because the owl said so. It's asleep, but also watching us. I feel like Link's Awakening is the big brother of Majora's Mask. Because they're sort of similar themes of we've ended up in a new world. There's a strong motif of nightmares involved. Right? Nightmares and dreams. This game isn't as utterly horrifying as Majora's Mask, but there is a through line. There are some darker themes a little bit later in the game. We'll see something. This island's not what it seems. Oh, we got lost. Doom doo doo doo. At least it's not playing the fairy music. Yeah, it's not like the Lost Woods. All he did was teleport us to a different part of the woods. He can't actually progress until you take care of that raccoon. Yep, and to do that, we need to make him sneeze. Because that makes sense. Yeah. There's a piece of power. Another effect you didn't talk about is that you walk faster. Oh, yeah. Look at me go. Hey, and there's a the choose. They still zap you. They also have funny quips. And the witch returns. She's got a little mouse. It's Maple. <laughs> she turned her into a mouse because she got mad at her. She was being a brat. You are going to start avoiding those someday. No, I do. Nah, first obstacle. That's actually the screen right above where the raccoon is. So I'm saying to avoid those. I love... I mean, having the, the power-ups is not a bad thing. It's just I hate that it changes the theme into this really repetitive three-second loop. Yeah. Forever. It's the worst part of it. And the text boxes are long. That too. This game, it tended to describe things to you every single time, even though you've already picked that item up or something like that, and that's not the only item it does that for. No. It was a learning experience, I guess. So one thing I learned in the process of making this LP is that those gels are called Zol. Right. Which, why? Are you contemplating? Maybe I can get that. Uh, I can't get it yet, because I can't push those out of the way. And those big skulls, I can't lift. But there's the mushroom. Hey, time to get high ourselves! Now, am I, am I remembering this wrong? In the original Game Boy version, was in the description, it smells like sweet, rotten fruit? Or is that like for A Link to the Past? No, it said a mellow aroma flows in your nostrils. I don't think they changed any of the text boxes in this game. And I must be thinking of a different game. Yeah, that's a different one you're thinking of, I think. So we got the mushroom, and the witch wants that. But first, turns out this is a fairy fountain. Let's heal that whole one heart. Or I could just cut the grass. Right. Once again, as I mentioned in the Oracle games, the fairy fountains, eh. But you're going to find out later that they are useful for something else. Nope, got to put it on the button. That's like the one time where that's the case. Yeah. Every other time they just smell it on you. But ironically, not with the smelly thing. I'm guessing it's because we actually converted into a weapon. The magic powder. It's a weapon and a utility item. And you gotta aim it right. Yeah. Mostly it makes fire. Throw it in a sconce, it lights it. Throw it on enemies, it lights them. Burn them. Yeah, there's no seeds in this game.
all of the seeds combined into this. They don't teleport you or do anything else. They're basically mystery seeds and ember seeds together. Yeah! D no, nope. you talk to them. <laughs> hey! Th what? I want to know the guy who had to write all of these. He was probably drunk! That was, a, that was an email from the boss that accidentally made it in the text box. <laughs> and then they loop once you've left the screen. So we know it kills things, so let's go shove some into that raccoon's face. Obviously, it deserves to die. There you go. Nope, see? We're in video one, we're already ignoring them. Dum 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 oh. Sure. I buy that. What? Hey Mario, what are you doing? You knocked his tanuki suit off. Hang on, aren't toadstools the poisonous ones? Right. It sure was fun, yeah no shit. I love this guy. He's the best. His purpose in this entire game is just to find things and get in trouble. Right. Hey, we got the key! To something we don't know about yet. So we need the owl to tell us. Hey, here's what keys do. Did you know you could open locked things with those? What? <laughs> oh, I pressed the button while I was leaving. But Bush just exploded as he left. The swamp's where we're going for, I think, the next dungeon. Yeah, swamp's level two. So this is the phone booth, and if you're lost, Ulrira, or Ulrira, Elvira, will give you hints. <laughs> I need to use them a fair bit. He's nice to have. Yeah. Turns out this is Ulrira's house. Yahoo! That grandma's really excited to be sweeping the grass. Also, she's not attacking you for some reason. Hey, buddy! Turns out Ulrira is an extreme introvert. Yeah, he won't give you any hints if you go to his house. He wants you to call him. The Bucket Mouse. Is that an actual character? I don't know. I don't think I've ever found a Bucket Mouse anywhere in this game. The only mouse I can think of is the one with the witch. Maybe Maple's trying to escape. Alright, so that's the library you were in earlier. If you remember in the Oracle games, they had the know-it-all birds hut. Library is just the, here's where you learn about things about the game. And the kids are very funny about breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. Their purpose is to know things but not understand them. The trendy game, it's so trendy! Everybody's doing it. That's why I don't have customers. You press the B to move it off to the left, and then you press A to move it down. Once you've pressed either button, you cannot go back, you cannot undo anything, so you need to be sure you know what you're gonna do. And that was me learning. So now, right. Now to play it with me knowing. And you notice the one thing that isn't moving is that Yoshi doll. It's like the one thing they want you to get. It's the easiest thing to get. There is a trick to guaranteeing picking up whatever you want to on the track. You need to plan it just a little bit ahead of like the second thing before you want to grab. One easy way to remember is if you put your claw at the top left corner with the B, and then the item you want ends up at the bottom right corner, just tap A real quick, and you'll get the thing. 
What a statue. Yeah, uh, I wonder what we're gonna find in here. More of your favorite thing to hunt. More of a boss that everybody loved. Oh yeah, that's so much so that he showed up in uh, how many, at least three or four other Zelda games. Or we'll see how I'll fight him in the next part. See ya!